Imagine with me our Savior, Jesus Christ, hanging on the cruel cross, bleeding, scourged, wounded, hanging there, barely able to breathe. And as he looks down at the crowd jeering at him, he sees someone. Someone catches his eye. It's his mother. And as he looks at her, he forgets the agony that he is in and the love and care that he has for his mother. And there next to his mother, he sees John, his beloved disciple. And in his dying words, in his dying breath, before, uh, before proclaiming those amazing words, it is finished. His last thoughts were to care for his family. And so we find his words in John chapter 19, verse 25. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple who he loved standing by. And he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And then to John, behold your mother. What a beautiful picture that we have of the loving care and compassion of Jesus. Jesus, yes, on this earth as a human being, but yet an even greater picture of God himself and his love and care for us. Come with me now as we explore God's love. God's love that is unfathomable. And we're just going to barely scratch the surface. Let's see what God has in store for us today. Welcome friends. I am so glad you decided to join us out here in the woods once again for another Sermon in the Woods. And I'm especially excited today because my beautiful bride, Christina, could come out here and uh, help to share this message with us today. And there's a particular reason why she came out here today and why I wanted to do this together. And tell us, Christina, what is this new series we're doing? Well, February is the month that we think about love. Valentine's is in February. It's kind of the month of hearts and love. And, you know, uh, sometimes when we think about those things, it might bring happy memories. It might bring happy thoughts of our happy family, uh, the love that we've experienced, or it might bring sadness, uh, sad memories, or maybe uh, even abuse um, or fear or things like that. And so, we thought it would be appropriate to spend the month of February, actually we're going to spend the next five weeks, uh, doing a series on God's love. Now there's uh, something special in March, that's why it's five <laughs> weeks, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, we'll be doing all four weeks of February and we'll be doing the first week of March because March 8th is our, our anniversary, our 12 year wedding anniversary. So uh, we thought, well, hey, why not do a five part series on God's love? And so that's what we're going to be sharing with you. Um, today is going to be the first part of the series, which is God's care for us. And in the next five weeks, we're going to be covering uh, God's care, uh, affection, respect, forgiveness, and trust. So stay with us. And uh, what do you think? Let's go for a walk through the woods. How's that sound? I'm excited. And uh, what better way to hear about God's care for us than from the most caring person that I know? 
I think he's slightly biased, but <laughs> well, uh, we're very thankful for God's care for us. And yes. While, can you and help us? We're not going to be talking about ourselves. We'll be talking about it from God's word. So let's, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your care towards us. Lord, as we go out in these woods, as we explore together, as we explore from your word about your care for us, I pray that you will lead us, guide us to you, wrap your loving arms around each one who is listening today, that they may feel your love and care. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go right. on an adventure. Let's go. Psalm 23 is a very familiar passage to most of us. Many of us memorized it as children. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Say it with me if you know it. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, we could probably say that in our sleep. But have we really stopped to consider what those words mean? You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Or if you were like me and learned it in the old King James Version, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. What does that mean? My cup runs over. You know, I believe that God created each of us with a cup. A cup that he wants to fill with his love, with his care, with his goodness, with his mercy, so that our hearts are just so full of his love that it spills over, runs over, so that we can share his love with everyone else. So if we just take this example of this love cup, just want to think about it for a minute. If each of us are born with a cup, how do our children, how do they get their cups filled? God gave them parents to fill their love cups so that they can understand what kind of love God has for them. Now, what about those of us, some of many of us may have grown up with parents who didn't show that love. God says, I will be a father to you, and I will fill your cup. So if we are filling our cups with God's love, if God is showering his love and filling us full so that we are spilling over, then would it not be our duty, our mission, to fill other people's cups with God's love so that they can experience it, so that they can see in us an example of God's love for us. I mean, look at what kind of God love God love God has for us. Excuse me. First Peter, five, six, and seven says, "Casting all your care upon Him, because He cares for you." God cares for us so much. He loves us so much. He just wants to shower it upon us. And he says, I want you to have a full cup. And I'm commissioning you to fill other people's cups too. So if we have the power to help fill other people's cups with God's love, would it not make sense that we also have the power to drain other people's cups of love? 
And that's kind of the flip side of it that we don't often think about. But when we are uh, upset, or when we speak harshly, or when we uh, are selfish and think about ourselves at the expense of other people, we are draining their love cuts. And God wants us, he says, don't drain them. I want you to fill them as I have filled yours. So as God shows his care for us, let's take a look in a deeper way at some of the ways that God cares for us and how he wants to use us to care for others. God is love, is written upon every opening bud, upon every spire of springing grass. The lovely birds making the air vocal with their happy songs, the delicately tinted flowers in their perfection perfuming the air, the lofty trees of the forest with their rich foliage of living green, all testify to the tender fatherly care of our Heavenly Father and His desire to make His children happy. God cares for us so much. He created us. He redeemed us. He bought us back. He's making a home for us. And yet, in the entire huge universe that He has created, He cares for you. He cares for me and he wants to make us happy. He loves us. What does the Bible have to say about it? In Zephaniah three seventeen, it says, the Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Have you ever thought about God singing? You know, the first time I read that verse, I had to laugh. I, <laughs> that, that wasn't something I envisioned God doing, you know? But He loves and cares for us so much. He rejoices over us, over you, over me, with singing. What else does the Bible say? In uh, Psalm 103, the whole chapter is so beautiful. But I want to just share with you verses 13 and 14. It says, like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. God knows our weak and sensitive and faulty natures. He knows our failings. He knows our weaknesses. And he pities us. He loves us. He cares for us so much. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 and 30, Jesus was sharing with the multitudes. He says, Are not two sparrows 
sold for a farthing or a copper coin, just a penny in today's standards, and not one of them falls to the ground without your father knowing. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Have you ever stopped to consider how valuable you are to God? Our Father hurts when we hurt. He feels our pain. He knows our weaknesses. And He cares for us. One of my favorite uh, songs in the hymnal is, Does Jesus Care? Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth and song? As the burdens press and the cares distress and my way goes weary and long. Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the way grows weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. You know, sometimes it's easy to think about how much God cares for us. But one thing that we really get confused on is how we should care for ourselves. I know that sounds really selfish, uh, but there's a big difference about caring for ourselves versus putting ourselves above others. And yes, God wants us to care for others, and that will be, uh, we'll explore that in greater detail in just a few minutes. But sometimes we forget that God cares about us so much that he wants us to care about ourselves. What am I talking about? Well, let's look at a couple verses in the Bible. One is in 3 John, verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Just think about it this way. If we can't take care of ourselves, how can we have anything to give to others? God wants us, he wants to fill us first. And then when our cup overflows, we can take care of others. So what are some things we can do to take care of ourselves? One, make it a priority to spend time with God. Spend time with God personally. Talk to him in prayer. Commune with him. Read the scriptures. Just take some time to connect me to God. And then, like we just read in the Bible, take care of our health. Make sure that we can get enough sleep. Make sure that uh, we're drinking our water, eating healthy, uh, taking care when we're stressed, giving ourselves time to rest. And I realize sometimes we feel like we can't. We feel like it's impossible but we have to put ourselves in priority. Jesus told his disciples when they got to that point where they were stressed, they were tired after a long missionary journey, he said, 
come you yourselves apart to a desert place and rest a while. You know, Daniel and I, we are busy. I run a restaurant, he's a pastor. Uh, but even we have to take some time apart to rest, to reconnect, to be refreshed so that we have something more to give. So as you're thinking about God's care for you, remember God cares for you so much that he wants you to take care of yourself. In Isaiah 55, verse 1 and 2, Jesus says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come to the waters. And he that has no money, come, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Jesus says, if you are thirsty, if you are in need, come. Come to the living water and I will quench your thirst. I will fill you. I will fill your cup full so that it can spill over and you can share my water of life with those around you. And so that brings us to our next section, caring for others. Yes, God wants us to care for others. Caring for others more than we care about ourselves. Not in the sense of, uh, caring for them so much that we demean ourselves, but caring for others like Jesus did in a self-sacrificing love. Not caring for them so that we can manipulate them to do what we want. Not caring for them in hopes that they will in turn fill us with love, but caring for them with Jesus' love. And once again, we have a verse in the Bible in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus says, Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give to your bosom. For in the same measure that you meet, with all, it shall be measured to you again. God wants us to give so that he can give us more love. It's a wonderful principle, just like this waterfall here that just is giving and giving and giving. And what does it do? It doesn't run out. It keeps having more to give. Whereas if you get a stagnant pond that never gives, what does it turn into? Smelly, mossy, slimy, uh, stagnant water where the mosquitoes come and lay their larvae and it stinks. God wants us to give. He wants us, he says, show my love so that I can give you more to give. In Proverbs chapter 11, 24 and 25, it says, the liberal soul shall be made fat and he that waters shall be watered also himself. So as we think about God's love during this month of February, I wanna encourage you to drink deeply of that water of life from Jesus. Let him fill you with his love. Don't block him. Don't push him away. Because if you do, you won't be able to feel that love. But open up your cup. Take the lid off. Let him fill you and let it spill over to all those around you.
as we think of the love and care of our Heavenly Father, we look forward, at least I do, I look forward so much to the day when there will be no more pain, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more crying, when God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes and we shall live in a perfect universe. And that day, we will get to experience God's love in the most amazing ways. We can experience it now through a darkened glass. We can feel God's presence when we're discouraged. He will hold our hand in the times that we fall. But then <laughs> there will be no veil between. We'll be able to see Jesus face to face. And I just can't imagine how glorious this universe will be without any trace of sin. All things will be clean. Everything will be together in unity. From the minutest atom to the, the greatest thing on the planet, all things, animate and inanimate, in total pure beauty, will declare that God is love. I look forward to that day so much. And I hope that you will continue to journey with us as we explore even more of God's love for us in the next five weeks. Let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who cares, that you are a God who sees us, that even when you are here on this earth in your dying hours on the cross, you cared for your mother and how much you experienced on this earth of the same pain and suffering that we go through now and you care for us through it all that you've promised to be our by our side that you've promised to hold our hand and never let us go and father we we thank you for this and father we take the lids off of our cups right now we hold them out to you we ask that you will fill them with your love that you will fill them like you did the psalmist David, that you will fill them until they run over overflowing, and that you will help us to be able to share that love to those around us so that you can fill us again. We thank you so much. We love you. And we ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen.